Good evening or good afternoon, depending on where you are. This is Temple Africa TV for Africans and people of African descent around the globe. Bonsoir à, à, à nos auditeurs, aux téléspectateurs et téléspectatrices de Temple Africa TV. Euh, la chaîne préférée, la chaîne dévolue à, aux Africains, euh, par les Africains, pour les Africains et tous les Afro-descendants à travers le monde. Welcome to our weekly show. What's up, Africa? Que fait l'Afrique? I'm Prof. Desiree Baloubi, linguist and cross-cultural communication specialist at Norfolk State University in Virginia, USA. Please join me today in welcoming two special guests, Prime Minister of the State of the African Diaspora, Dr. Louis George Tin. And Good afternoon, Professor. Is, good afternoon. How, how are you? Fine, thank you. Very good, very good. I'm glad to have you here. And uh, uh, the Minister of Education of the State of the African Diaspora, Ms. Wimbai Chewuswa. Uh, she's with, uh, with us here today from London, I believe. Welcome to the show, uh, Ms. Chewuswa. Good day, Professor. Thank you so much for our, uh, inviting me here. Alors, comme d'habitude, je suis votre serviteur, le professeur Désiré Baloubi, linguiste et communicateur à l'Université d'État de Norfolk, dans l'État de la Virginie, aux États-Unis. Nous avons deux invités, pas des moindres, ce soir. Euh, C'est le premier ministre de l'État de la diaspora africaine et docteur Louis Jortin, qu'on ne présente plus. Et euh, une nouvelle venue, euh, nouvelle venue sur la scène avec nous, bien sûr, pas de, dans l'État de, euh, de la diaspora, de toutes les façons, et il s'appelle euh, Wimbay. She was what? Elle est sur le plateau ici, mais nous la recevons depuis Londres. Prime Minister Tin, just a few words about yourself. Uh, we can't introduce you. You're not new to the show, but say just a few words about yourself. I will say a few words, maybe more about uh, She was what, but uh, you will have to reintroduce her uh, to all Africans and to the entire world today. So let's go, Prime Minister Tin. Yes, only a few words about myself. I was born in Martinique in the French West Indies, and I became an activist for um, African rights in France. And uh, I'm now the prime minister of the state of the African diaspora that was created three years ago. So our objective is to reinforce Africa through the diaspora and the diaspora through Africa. Très eh bien, et puis, on ne le présente plus de toute façon pour les francophones. Nous avons fait une émission ici déjà avec le premier ministre de l'État de euh, la diaspora africaine, c'est le docteur euh, Louis-Georges Tine, un activiste pas, euh, de la paix, de l'union, du regroupement de tout le monde noir. Et puis, euh, cela dit en passant, merci pour tout ce que vous êtes en train de faire pour l'Afrique et les œuvres commencent à descendre. Uh, dans le cadre de votre combat, vous, êtes, vous étiez uh, à l'avant-garde de ce combat et on commence à non seulement entendre parler de ça, mais à voir et à toucher du doigt. Merci pour ce que vous faites. Thank you for doing what you've been doing and the artifacts are stolen during the colonization, the African conquest by the, by the European. Uh, yeah. uh, those articles, some of those articles are now coming back and you've been in the forefront of that battle. Thank you for doing that. The state of the African that's where I live long the state. Now, the Minister of Education, she was, well, she's a member of uh, SOAD, the state of the African diaspora, and uh, as a member of the parliament, uh, she's a CEO of multiple companies. The Minister, she was, well, education and work experience are grounded in agribusiness and health sciences, especially occupational health science. She's also familiar with the humanities, philology, anthropology, and political science with skills in multilingual education for translation, international relations, humanitarian assistance, community and development. The list is long, but let's cut it short. Notre invité, donc, c'est le ministre chez vous, elle est membre du Parlement de l'État de la diaspora africaine, elle est PDG de plusieurs compagnies, son éducation, sa formation, et eh bien c'est dans l'agro-business, c'est dans les sciences de la santé surtout, les sciences de la santé, sciences de la santé professionnelle. 
Alors, euh, elle a aussi familière, elle a aussi euh, fait des études dans les humanités, la philologie, l'anthropologie, euh, sciences politiques, elle est polyglotte. Elle fait de la traduction, elle a travaillé avec euh, les, les réfugiés, etc., etc. La liste est trop longue. And, and, and le, notre sujet ce soir, and our topic today is global education in the 21st century. The state of the African diaspora is a unique initiative. Et bien, c'est l'éducation, donc, sur le plan global au 21e siècle. Uh, L'initiative inédite de l'état de la diaspora africaine. My first question, Prime Minister Tina, I know I've said something, a few words about the Minister of Education. Please reintroduce Mrs. Wusa to the world. Well, yes, yes, thank you very much. You know, the birth of a nation is always something special. Most nations were born out of a war. That is the case, for example, for the United States, for Korea, uh, for all the countries of South America, etc., etc. But the state of the African diaspora was created not because of a war, but because of a desire to be united. So you may know that 350 million inhabitants from Africa reside out of Africa because of migrations, because of slavery and deportation. But all of them are still Africans in the diaspora. So that's why in 2003, the African Union decided to create the sixth region. So there are already five regions on the continent, north, south, east, west, and center. And therefore, the diaspora is regarded as the sixth region. But uh, for many years, this, this, this decision remained only a paper. So that's why I was requested to create a special entity to give substance to the diaspora. So this is why three years ago, during the summit of the African Union, we created the state of the African diaspora. So we have a government, we have a, a parliament, we have ambassadors, and we've got programs of action from culture to agriculture, through space, sports, industry, trade, etc. So this is what we are doing every day. And of course, education is one of our great concerns. And I'm very happy to discuss that today with you, with our excellent Minister of Education, Mrs. Chiwoswa. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you th very much. Uh, uh, let, me, let me say this. You are bilingual. Can you do me a favor? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you knew that was coming, right? Yeah, yes. <laughs> well, that makes a lot of sense. Donc, je peux traduire yeah. mon langue. Just, just summarize, just summarize, because, yes. uh, you know, French speakers... Je disais que beaucoup de nations naissent de conflits armés. C'est le cas des États-Unis, de la plupart des États d'Amérique du Sud, de la Corée du Sud, d'Israël. Et nous, nous sommes nés plutôt d'un désir de réunion car euh, la diaspora, c'est 350 millions d'habitants. Que ces gens euh, soient partis de l'Afrique dans un contexte de migration, dans un contexte de déportation, ils n'en sont pas moins des Africains. C'est la diaspora. Et c'est pour cela que l'Union africaine a dit que la diaspora, c'est la sixième région d'Afrique. Encore fallait-il donner une structure. Et donc, euh, j'ai été mandaté pour créer cette structure. C'est cela l'état de la diaspora africaine qui a été constitué il y a trois ans, lors du sommet de l'Union africaine, et nous avons eu constitution, un gouvernement, un parlement, une chambre royale, et des actions qui vont de la culture à l'agriculture, en passant par la santé, l'industrie, le commerce et l'éducation, dont nous parlerons aujourd'hui avec notre ministre, Madame Chiwoswa. Très bien. Merci, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think you, there, I had another question, but you've already answered it in the first question, because I was going to ask you what is, what, what, I mean, how did uh, uh, so what came into being? But I will ask that question about the university, so that because this is a contest of education, let's talk about education and tell us what, uh, 
tell us something about this initiative and what's unique about it in terms of its rational vision, mission, and implementation, Prime Minister Tin. And we're talking about the University of SOA in, as an initiative. What is unique about it? Because I personally find it to be unique, and I'm sure you do too. So tell us something about it in terms of rational uh, vision, mission, and then that will lead you to introducing uh, the Minister of Education. Please, go ahead. Well, thank you for your question. It is true that most of the things that we are doing are very, very new. So there's no need to explain why education in general is so important, of course. Um, so we had to do something about education and we have different programs around education, but the most important is our university. So USOA, the University of the State of the African Diaspora, was created in October. I published the decree and for the inauguration, we were very happy to have uh, four sponsors, great people supporting our initiative. Two women, one of them is Marie Condé from Guadeloupe. She won the um, Nobel Award in Literature a few years ago. The other one is Eusanne Palsy, also a great artist making many movies, and she even won the UNESCO Award a few years ago. Uh, you know, she made movies with uh, Mar uh, Marvin Brando, Marlon Brando, and many other great stars. So we are very proud of her. Uh, we've got also two great men. For example, Chief Fortune Charambira, who is the president of the Parliament of the African Union, and also Sheikh Modi Bodiara, who is um, the director of Microsoft Africa, who used to be director in the NASA, a project director in the NASA, and also used to be the prime minister of Mali. So with all these great people, we are already empowered. So we've got more than uh, 20 faculties uh, from Pan-African languages to history, through drone and robotics, uh, um, we've got a faculty of Indian Ocean Studies, a faculty of uh, space and industry. And we've got four pillars, I would say. The first one is obviously Pan-Africanism. That's why we've got this faculty of Pan-African languages that is based in Nigeria. The second pillar is innovation. The third is truth. And the fourth is justice. So let me explain a little bit more. Innovation and truth are very crucial. If I tell you, Professor, that two plus two equals four, you will say, well, that is very true, but not very new. Right. Reversely, if I tell you that if that two plus two equals 64, you will say, well, that's very new, but not very true. So you need to be new and true to make a proper research, a proper investigation, but justice, the four pillar, is also important because you may pro promote education, but is it really education for all? What about the people who live in the rural areas? What about the women? What about the people who don't have enough money? So that's why we want to make sure that the university is free, accessible to all, and also we've got some faculties that are face-to-face, -face, but uh, most of them are online because it's easier to reach most people when you go online. So this is what we're doing at the moment. Donc je peux résumer en français? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Je disais effectivement yeah. que nous avons euh, lancé cette université au mois d'octobre, de, de, euh, donc ça fait à peine deux mois, et nous avons euh, des parrains et marraines de prestige, et nous en sommes très fiers, Euh, nous avons, par exemple, Marise Condé, prix Nobel de littérature, qui vient de la Guadeloupe. Nous avons Eusanne Palsy, la grande cinéaste qui avait gagné le prix de l'UNESCO il y a quelques années. Nous avons euh, le chef Fortune Charambira, qui est le président du Parlement de l'Union africaine. Nous avons Sheikh Modi Bodiara, qui est euh, prédégé dg de Microsoft Africa, ancien directeur de projet à la NASA et ancien premier ministre du Mali. Donc, ce sont ces personnalités qui nous font confiance et qui nous permettent d'avancer. Et puis, nous avons euh, une vingtaine de facultés. Ça va des langues panafricaines 
euh, ou la faculté de l'histoire, en passant par la faculté de drones et de robotique, la faculté d'agriculture, des sciences de l'espace, etc. Et euh, notre enseignement repose sur quatre piliers. Le panafricanisme, l'innovation, la vérité et la justice. Alors, le panafricanisme, eh bien, euh, ça va de soi. Il y a tellement d'universités dans le monde qui dispensent un savoir euh, anti-africain ou qui ignorent l'Afrique dans le meilleur des cas. Euh, il est normal que nous soyons panafricains, je n'insiste pas davantage, ça tombe sous le sens. Euh, vérité et nouveauté, eh bien, ça va ensemble. Parce que si vous faites une recherche et vous dites « j'ai trouvé, après ma recherche, que 2 plus 2 égale 4 », euh, professeur, je vous dirai, c'est très vrai, mais pas très nouveau. Si vous dites 2 plus 2 après votre recherche, ça fait 18, je dirais ça c'est nouveau, mais ce n'est pas très vrai. Donc il faut trouver des choses très vraies, mais aussi très nouvelles. C'est la base de toute recherche. Et puis, bien sûr, l'égalité, parce que souvent l'éducation n'est pas accessible à tous. Est-elle accessible aux plus pauvres, aux femmes, aux, monde du, aux gens du monde rural euh, Souvent, ce n'est pas le cas. Et c'est pour ça que notre université est effectivement gratuite. Euh, beaucoup de facultés sont en ligne pour favoriser une meilleure diffusion. Donc voilà un peu ce qui caractérise notre université de l'état de la diaspora africaine. Super, super. Now you just make that link and get to the Minister of Education, please. Et non, c'est la présentation de la ministre de l'Éducation, s'il vous plaît. Alors, euh, je peux euh, la présenter. I can introduce Vimbai. Uh, so she's been our Minister of Education for a few, a few weeks already. Um, she has done a lot of things already. I think she knows every corner of the university. So that's why she was nominated, because she's very efficient. And we need somebody who is very active, dynamic, have a lot of skills, you know, the diversity of things that she has already done. So she was the perfect match. Et donc, je dirais que euh, Madame Chiwoswa était le profil idéal parce qu'elle a des compétences très, très diversifiées. Et pour diriger une université, il faut avoir des compétences très diversifiées, alors des humanités aux sciences. Elle est extrêmement euh, active, euh, dévouée, consacrée, euh, elle se consacre pleinement au panafricanisme et elle connaît tous les secteurs de l'université. C'est vraiment le profil idéal. C'est pour ça qu'elle a été nommée. So let me give the floor to our Minister of Education, Mr. Baloubi. You certainly have a lot of questions to ask to her. Yeah. Donc je vous laisse la parole pour lui poser les questions. Welcome aboard, Madam Minister of Education. Thank you so much, Professor. Uh, <laughs> it's, no. it's, I'm still recovering from the shock of being in this position, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, as you know, as you all know, one show would not uh, give us enough time to discuss all the details of this unique initiative that you are in charge of and the task you've been assigned to accomplish. But how would you summarize the reasons why uh, prospective students around the globe should matriculate at USOAD? Alors, bienvenue, uh, Madame la Ministre, uh, sur cette émission pas suffit pour donner tous les détails, n'est-ce pas, euh, ben, résumer à peu près les raisons fondamentales et qui pourraient motiver un étudiant à s'inscrire à l'Université de l'État de la Diaspora. You get a floor, please. Uh, thank you so much uh, for this uh, question. Um, if you look at it, the way that uh, this so what has been created is already unique. So we are coming together a whole group of people from all walks of life. Like we are basically saying, there is no place where there is no black person, where there is no African person anywhere in the world. So that already brings a whole world of knowledge, a whole world of experience that we are concentrating on one place together. Very good. Is let, me, let me then summarize that because my memory at <laughs> old age. <laughs> Voyez uh, l'état de, de la diaspora africaine aussi bien que son université, et eh bien ça a été créé de façon unique. Vous voyez, il n'y a pas ce petit coin du monde où, où on ne trouve pas euh, la race noire. Alors nous regrouper, nous regrouper, nous retrouver tous ensemble pour euh, assumer cette tâche qui est d'éduquer 
tous les Africains, partout où ils sont, c'est vraiment quelque chose de fascinant. Et c'est une raison fondamentale pour que vous puissiez prendre part à cette entreprise, parce que entreprise, il faut l'appeler. Go ahead. Talking of wealth experience and our lived experiences, we have people who have been like real professionals who are working in the developed countries where we are, where we live. Like we said, we are everywhere, right? We can take a, a real examples like um, already mentioned, uh, the former president of Mali, Modibo, he worked with the NASA. He built a rocket there. So now with that experience, we are now building our own rocket. We are not just learning a rocket from the books, but we are building a rocket. It might okay. not be launched today, but maybe in 10 years, we'll definitely have one. So we are practically doing the work, not just talking. Alors, je peux déjà vous dire que les Noirs, ils sont partout. Nous sommes dans les pays développés un peu partout et puis notre connaissance. Ce n'est pas simplement théorie, mais c'est de la pratique. Quand vous prenez l'exemple de, de euh, Modibo, des gens qui ont travaillé à la NASA, euh, qui ont aidé à fabriquer donc, les fusées, eh bien, toutes ces connaissances mises en commun, et nous allons fabriquer notre, euh, notre fusée en Afrique, nous allons fabriquer nos robots, nous allons fabriquer, n'est-ce pas, en tirant euh, de nos propres expériences, expériences pratiques euh, dans euh, la, la diaspora, et c'est très essentiel. Our university brings that uniqueness. I'm, remaining, I'm still remaining on the experience that we have as a collective people. How many professional people are working as cleaners in Europe? How many professional people are working as, you know, I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying cleaning jobs are bad. I have cleaned myself. How many people with their degrees, like, I mean, in their pockets who are working in the factories in diaspora wherever they went to look for greener pastures people who left very good paying jobs and thought it was better out there but who are now cleaning the streets who have no jobs who have been broken down but our university are saying come on people let's work together bring that knowledge those certificates that you have in the houses bring them on so you find that Our university, our lecturers are coming from all over. It's a matter of saying, you know what? I am a, a professional in this faculty. Do we have something going on? If that faculty is not there, you come in and bring the program on place. So we are giving an opportunity to every African who is willing to do something to change the situation as it is. Not just think and complain about the situation, but we are actively changing the situation, we are resetting. Alors, cette expérience, elle est unique en ce sens que l'université crée une opportunité pour que tout le monde, tous les Africains de la diaspora, quels que soient les diplômes que vous avez, d'ailleurs, ce n'est pas les diplômes qui importent, c'est ce que vous savez faire. Ce qui compte, c'est donc qu'est-ce que vous savez faire. Donc, tout le savoir-faire que nous avons partout dans le monde, tout ce monde. Il y a des gens qui ont le doctorat et qui sont en train de balayer la rue. Ce n'est pas que le balayage de la rue, ce n'est pas que la plonge en tant que travail dans un hôtel, que c'est une, une œuvre avilissante, mais vous êtes professionnel, vous l'avez exercé. Donc cette pratique, cette connaissance déjà de ce métier, eh bien tout le monde apporte pour que, n'est-ce pas, nous ne soyons plus traités comme des gens qui sont en quête du travail ailleurs, mais nous allons tout reconstituer chez nous en Afrique continentale et dans la diaspora. Our university is giving all our inventors place. How many of those beautiful inventions have just disappeared? They were deleted from Africans. They didn't done this and they were hidden. Some great people that were there who did real good things that we don't know about because we were not taught about that. Because, you know, it's recorded in the books, but it's not in our history books. It's not in our geography books. You know, we have 
beautiful people that we um if we look at who div i've got a light there who discovered the filament that made the light work it was a black person but do we know about that it was not taught to us and we are bringing the university we have a, de a department where we can acknowledge those inventions by black people where we will bring them to the people to say you know what this is us this is what we have done knowing what we did in the past knowing what we are doing now the inventions we are making they are ours we are supposed to keep them and show our children so they can be proud of themselves so they can even us as adults sometimes you know you, you stand there in the company it's happening those who are in diaspora you know that you are the ones who have been the brains we have been working we have been thinking putting strategies on the table and then somebody just comes in and say oh it was me and you don't even have the courage to say excuse me it was me who did that so we are having a, a, a place where we can come in with our talent with our passion and what we have produced ourselves and say this is what we have done and show it to our people everywhere in the world so that we can stand and be bold and say yes this is us we need to make that rethinking and saying it's not that we are not good enough we are good even better than good enough alors cette université comme on le disait tantôt donne l'opportunité de rassembler tous les talents africains n'est-ce pas de par le monde vous savez notre livre le livre de notre histoire a été fermé nous avons été on nous a mis un masque on nous a aveuglé on nous a miroité d'autres choses et vous ne pouvez pas vous imaginer que celui qui a fabriqué le filament qui produit la lumière était peut-être une personne noire. Celui qui a inventé ceci, ce qui a inventé cela, nos inventions, on a vraiment occulté cela. Et les Africains ne le savent pas. Eh bien, l'université allait découvrir, allait rechercher tous ces talents. Au départ, Monsieur le Premier ministre vous, vous disait, vous citez des noms qui ont été euh, prix Nobel de ceci, prix Nobel de cela. Mais ce n'est pas écrit dans nos livres d'histoire. Ce n'est pas écrit parce qu'on ne voulait pas qu'on sache que vraiment, nous avons les talents. Nous avons des talents. Après tout, le monde, l'humanité, ça a commencé en Afrique. Alors le génie appartient à l'Afrique et nous l'avons distribué. Donc l'université va reconstituer, n'est-ce pas, ce centre de savoir vivre, de savoir être et de savoir faire pour redistribuer ça. D'abord vers tous les, tous les pays, tous les coins où se trouvent les Africains et que le monde entier aussi en bénéficie. Merci. Maintenant, ma dernière question. Ma dernière question, parce que nous sommes déjà prêts. Je suis désolé de vous dire. Mais dites-nous à cette question que les étudiants peuvent vous demander. Tell us about accreditation for program assessment and degree recognition or convertibility across the board. Will you? Because soon I will say, okay, I enroll, I matriculate, uh, how by my uh, degree would that convert into what? Bachelor degree in francophone country. So what, what is it? What is it? What are the measures that you've taken to guarantee that accreditation and program assessment, all of that are secured and they are comparable across the board? Okay, thank you for the question. As you know that we are, we've just started, so we have put in place or we have started the processes of uh, getting accreditation from the international, yeah? But you know what, let's put that aside. We already know that most of the people who studied in African countries, our degrees are not valued in Europe anyway, or anywhere in the so-called world. So that's an illusion that we need, uh, we need that, to be the status and uh, the standard of what we can achieve because mm. it's already not working as we are speaking. So mm. it brings us to the point that, like we are saying, we are sword, right? As sword, we are saying this is the standards we are going to use. We are putting standards, remember, that is Dr. Tin, right? With his, with, with his degree from wherever he started, right? Professor. There is me, I studied in German. There are other people who are coming with us together. So together we will create the level standard international that it can be accepted within our group first. We are concentrating first on us, right? We have jobless children in Africa, jobless children in Europe. They need jobs. 
if we create a standard ourselves that we say, you know what, when they leave our university, they will be good enough and safe enough to work in the environment. That is what we need. So that is the first, the first, first accreditation that do we accept ourselves? Do we accept to say when we teach somebody something, they've understood they are going to build a house that will stand 100 years from now. Mm. Can we teach our students that? That's the first standard that we need. When we bring our students out there, our community has to know that they can trust us to bring them students that know what they're doing. So that is also a standard, right? We go back to that. Like I said, we have our teams in different places. So that means our students are going to learn to work practically and theoretically. Mm. Practically, because we have geniuses from all over and all over the world. We are partnering with that. So that means our students will have the highest level of education. You can think of the highest practical skills that when they finish in four years time, we know they are ready. They are going to do the job properly. Right? So that's one way of Edu uh, like of putting standards on the floor. We look at the situation where we are also saying standards to accept it. You have to have, you have to like say, um, we are working with professionals who are already in their own jobs. They are professionals already where they are. So they wouldn't do anything silly, sorry my language, that would jeopardize the, what they are doing. So that is also already a status, mm -hmm. right? So if then we look at, so what we are doing is our students that we are bringing together, they will have the standards that we are creating, which is based on the so-called, the first one is the informal, the inf informal way of accreditation, which works on reputation. So mm. we can stand there and say our teachers, our lecturers, our deans are really good and they know what they are doing. Because remember, they are coming by themselves to say, oh, guys, I heard you are doing this, and I want to be part of it. They have the passion. So that's why you see that we are coming together. That is a standard on its own. And then for those who want the so-called uh, paper, like what did the international people say? We are working, we've started the process to talk to different organizations that create those um, creations so that we have them for, in case for those who need them. And then the other thing to that, we are not going to work as an island, mm. right? We are uniting, we are, we are um, operating, we are forming networks, networks, already functioning universities, so mm. that our students can get the best from different parties around the world to create the leaders that we want to say, guys, go out and do the jobs so that we come out of the problems Africa has and diaspora has. I don't know if it answers the question. Yeah, you answered the question, right? But beyond expectation, let me just summarize that in French and say, j'ai posé à la ministre de l'Éducation la question de l'accréditation, euh, donc de la reconnaissance de, ou de la conversion euh, des équivalences de diplômes. Parce que lorsque on entre en faculté, on se dit, bon, alors j'aurai le diplôme dans telle, dans telle matière, et si je quittais que j'allais ailleurs, est-ce que euh, mais, bon, mon relevé de notes ou bien mon que j'ai appris serait reconnu comme officiel. Et là, elle a donné une réponse formidable. Elle a dit, il faut commencer par comprendre que la plupart de nos diplômes que nous obtenons en Afrique, lorsque nous, avons, nous arrivons aux États-Unis, lorsque nous allons en Allemagne, lorsque nous allons en Europe, et dans, nous sortons de l'Afrique en général, ces diplômes ne sont pas reconnus de toute façon. Et c'est pourquoi nous retrouvons, si on ne trouve pas de boulot, on se met à balayer, on se fait à faire la plonge, etc. etc. Mais on a, quand on a fait tout cela, est-ce qu'il ne nous revient pas euh, de droit euh, d'établir nos standards, nos critères et expérience aidant, leçon ayant été tirée euh, de notre expérience, soit aux États-Unis, en Allemagne, un peu partout, quand nous nous retrouvons au sein de cette université, eh bien, c'est déjà en soi une union et un, euh, un critère fondamental, un standard, une façon déjà de, de dire le monde entier, nous sommes le monde entier, nous sommes venus de partout. Alors, puisque l'université vient d'être euh, établie, bien sûr, nous allons mettre sur pied ces, ces standards, ces, ces, ces paramètres, etc. Mais pour nous, ce qui compte le plus, c'est qu'est-ce que l'on sait faire. 
Lorsque vous êtes, vous êtes étudiant dans cette université, quelqu'un qui a vécu des années d'expérience de travail en Allemagne, ou bien en Chine, ou bien au Guatemala, un peu partout, il vous apprend à construire une maison. L'essentiel est que lorsque vous avez votre diplôme, et bien lorsque vous sortez, vous soyez capable d'ériger un bâtiment qui puisse tenir le coup pendant au moins un siècle. Alors, lorsque les faits sont là, c'est factuel, c'est actuel et c'est tangible, et bien il n'y a plus de, de reconnaissance de diplôme ou de tout ce qui puisse tenir le coup, pas du tout. Alors tout le monde viendra vers nous. Parce que ce que nous faisons, ce n'est pas pour développer les autres, c'est pour nous développer, c'est pour nous reconstruire, reconstruire notre histoire, nous reconstruire financièrement, politiquement, économiquement, pour que nous soyons enfin souverains. Let me say a few words also about accreditation, if you don't mind, uh, dear minister. Um, accreditation is important, but in fact, what is most important is the symbolical accreditation. If you want to go to Harvard, you are not going to ask the dean whether his faculty has been accredited or not. If you go to Cambridge or La Sorbonne, you go there because of their reputation. And we have a reputation as well. If I say that we've got Nobel, uh, Nobel Awards, uh, we've got somebody like Sheikh Boudi Boudiara, the president of the parliament of the EU, that is the credibility. The credibility does not lie on a paper. The credibility lies in the men and women who are actually building the university. And another topic which is very important is jobs. Because you want to have a diploma to get a job. And we are creating jobs. Two weeks ago, we signed a cooperation agreement to build five smart cities in Africa with a company owned by people of African descent in the United States. So one city is a lot of jobs, five cities even more. You need architects, engineers, workers, people working in agriculture, doctors, schools, etc., all kinds of jobs. So, of course, we will primarily recruit from our own universities. So the people who come to us will have a serious opportunity to get a job because why should I recruit somebody outside of my own university? So that's also another reason why students should come to us because they will have more opportunities to find a job everywhere in the world, in Africa, or in the diaspora. Donc, rapidement, en français, je disais qu'il y a l'accréditation formelle, euh, les papiers, euh, très bien, mais le plus important, c'est l'accréditation informelle. Quand vous allez à Harvard, à Cambridge ou à la Sorbonne, vous ne demandez pas est-ce que le doyen a euh, une accréditation. Vous allez à Harvard parce que c'est Harvard, parce qu'il y a une réputation. Bon, et bien dans l'état de la diaspora africaine, c'est pareil. Nous avons le prix Nobel, nous avons euh, le président du Parlement de l'Union africaine, nous avons l'ancien premier ministre du Mali, euh, directeur de projet à la NASA, etc. Et donc, c'est ça qui fait la réputation. Quand nous disons « nous allons faire la fusée », eh bien, les gens vont se dire « mais moi, je veux dans la faculté qui fait la fusée. Je ne veux pas savoir s'il y a un crédit, je veux savoir s'il y a une fusée. » Et moi, dans mon CV, après, tout le monde dira « waouh, ça, c'est l'endroit où il y a la fusée africaine. » So, all the engineers they will say, I want to be in the faculty where the African rocket is being built because that's going to be written on my resume. Donc, vous voyez, c'est ça qui est vraiment important. Et puis, dernier point, comme nous allons construire des villes, et notamment, nous avons déjà signé cinq contrats avec cinq smart cities en Afrique. Où allons-nous recruter les gens Les ingénieurs, les docteurs, les architectes, les médecins à l'université. Si nous formons des étudiants, nous allons recruter des professionnels de qualité pour faire ces villes, les développer. Et donc, les étudiants qui viennent chez nous, ils ont déjà une perspective d'emploi tout à fait assurée, puisque c'est là notre premier vivet d'embauche. Donc voilà pourquoi nous disons que les intérêts, euh, l'intérêt d'adhérer à cette université sont évidents, parce que nous créons à la fois euh, les postes, l'université et les jobs qui vont avec. That's training and employment opportunity. Training and employment opportunity, wonderful. Yeah. Now, um, let, let me go back to the Minister of Education. Uh, tell us about the uh, user structure, like in terms of 
of, of administrative okay. leadership, uh, academic uh, uh, entities, shared governance. How is it structured? Is there any so, self question. You know, like as we are coming together, one core thing that is hold, one core theme that is holding us together as a people is Ubuntu, respecting and valuing of each other, wanting to work together. That is one core theme that is holding us together. Okay, so we have, we have faculties where we will have our deans and the different uh, the different uh, positions they will have. So we also have within the faculties. Uh, we have also departments in there, so we have the one part that is really doing the job. We have the management, the other doctor, way, other doctor, way, other doctor, so the lab, who is our chief director. So we have also that for the governing body that is looking into looking how the job is happening, and we need a, a really a, really a active coordinator. We are everywhere. We are so that we know the job that has been done has been done properly we are checking our standards ourselves so we have an extra body that will be standing in to govern that to check that the work is done properly and then we are holding on on the good governance we have the policy of open um open office if you want to call it open, sorry, open door policy where i am minister today but yesterday i was in by and yesterday I was talking to Dr. Chin, like, oh, she come for the interview, like, ah, uh ah, -uh, not this position. But here I am, right? So it also shows that for us to be able to work together, we have to have an understanding of what is shared governance. On my own, I won't be able to go far. But if we work together, having the responsibility that you say, you know what, this is my part, I will be doing this. And you know, like I know that the next group or the next department are going to do their job properly and they understand the policies of what makes so what together, what makes so what, what are our four pillars we are holding on, what is Ubuntu, then we will be able to create a good working environment among among us first as leaders, as you know, like we leave that example that we can show, we can show our our students who, who will then be able to go out and practice what they have seen within within us. I hope it answers. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, je vais poser la question donc de, de gouvernance, la, personne, uh, la question donc de la hiérarchie uh, dans l'université hiérarchie du point de vue donc de l'administration, uh, la chaîne de commande, comme on le dit. Et puis, bon, elle a répondu brillamment pour dire, nous allons puiser dans, pas, euh, dans nos, de nos cultures africaines, parce qu'après tout, euh, la fondation, c'est le Ubuntu. Ubuntu, c'est euh, l'humanité, notre humanité, nous sommes ensemble. Alors, vous euh, voyez, on a souvent reproché à l'Afrique, on a dit, les ressources humaines, il y en a, l'intelligence, il y a, mais ce qui manque en Afrique, c'est surtout le leadership, c'est la gouvernance, etc. Cette université va répondre à toutes ces questions, relever ces défis, où on va former des gens euh, qui savent qu'ils euh, ils font partie, ils sont un petit maillon euh, dans la chaîne, euh, la chaîne de la communauté où l'on est, la, la communauté au niveau de la famille, de, 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 du, du quartier, de la ville, euh, du pays, euh, de, de, de l'univers. On travaillera ensemble. Aujourd'hui, vous êtes ici, et euh, demain, vous êtes ailleurs. Et, que chacun fasse son travail et on le fera bien et collectivement dans euh, l'harmonie. Euh, C'est cela euh, qui caractérise euh, la structure, n'est-ce pas, de notre université. On aura des structures donc traditionnelles, mais on y mettra de l'Africain, de l'Africain, c'est-à-dire communautaire. Ensemble, on est toujours plus fort. Now let's let's talk about uh, student support services uh, in terms of 
finance, uh, human resources, and uh, what have you. Okay. And either Thanks. the Minister of Education or Prime Minister, you go for it. So if we look at students, yeah. they are why we are coming together as a university, as leaders from all over the world, putting up time to say, you know what, we want this to change. If I can look back, I can say most of us know what studying means. And now we are in the digital world that makes our situation even more unique because some of our students if never, maybe until now, they knew that with the phone, you can go on Zoom, you can go on Twitter, but not so many, maybe not so many started to try to study using the phone. Now we are saying, hey, guys, it can happen. So that's one way of saying, all right, some will, be, will have technical difficulties. So we will set up a strong team that will be able to help them manage because you saw what is going to be run on an online, on an online platform mainly. So we are hoping that in the, few, in the near future, we'll have our centers on the ground. But until then, we have to function online. So we are going to help have uh, programs where we can orient the students to say, when you log in, this is where you start. This is where you find the materials. This is where you, you, as you, you submit your assignment. So there is a team dedicated to that. We know that now um, as, we, as situations are changing, right, we have students who are starting as youngsters who still don't know where they are going and why they are supposed to be making an effort anyway and then we have adults who are going back to school to say you know i want to change the, the subject that i had so all those people as well need that support team as well that can do counseling with them to say if they are feeling stuck or if they think maybe it's the wrong thing actually what they're doing so they need somebody to talk to we will have a support team that will be there for them. Remember Africans, they have got so many languages. Zimbabwe alone has more than 10 languages. South Africa is 12, 13 official languages. We have many languages. So we will have that, that as a problem as well. Not so many English speakers are real good in English. Not so many French speakers. So we will need to juggle that as well, have a team that is dedicated to help students manage the different languages. Remember that for our languages, uh, we have like four, English, Spanish, Portuguese, and French, right? And then come to say like we have, maybe we left Swahili, maybe, maybe, maybe the other languages. So we will need a dedicated team as well that will help the student manage to learn in their mother language. Or like, let's say in our teams, we can build groups to say, okay, for the, for the, for the um, Shona speakers who are finding it difficult or challenges with this subject, we have somebody who will help them understand what is required of them so that they can go and manage. Because um, studying in a wrong language, believe me, is a nightmare. I studied German in German, trying to jungle German and English in, in, at a master's level. So I know it's a nightmare. But we will need to put that together so that our people, our students will have um, access to, to help they need. And then there is today well-being. We will need also a team based on that because if the mind is not working properly, if things around you is not working, then the mind won't be ready to, uh, to work on the studies. So we will have also a body that is responsible for that. Okay. Uh, is my camera done? Yeah, so your camera is gone. So while you fixing it, while you fixing it, let me just uh, summarize very briefly. Saying, la question a été posée uh, relativement au, au soutien qu'il faut apporter aux étudiants du point de vue donc des ressources humaines, finances et tout cela. Et la ministre de l'Éducation a dit c'est le Ubuntu en application. Et c'est ça que nous allons appliquer. Ça veut dire que c'est on travaille en équipe. Eh bien, et heureusement, on est à l'ère du numérique, de l'information, de la communication. Nous sommes dans ce siècle. Et bien, euh, on a commencé l'université, on va commencer euh, en ligne, c'est-à-dire en ligne avec euh, le numérique. Euh, l'université aura sa propre plateforme. Et bien, là, là où les étudiants vont s'inscrire, ils seront orientés. On va leur, tout leur expliquer et cela va se faire. Comme nous faisons cette émission maintenant, vous voyez, euh, la ministre à Londres et 
le premier ministre, n'est-ce pas, de l'état de la diaspora est à Paris. Vous voyez Et puis le monde, ainsi, grâce à la technologie, lorsque ça marche, et puis on fera tout pour que ça marche. Mais on ne va pas simplement compter sur ça, on va ouvrir aussi, n'est-ce pas, euh, des, des annexes ou bien des succursales, et ce sera aussi en présentiel, euh, dans certains coins que l'État va définir. Et nous sommes au début, mais ce, ce, cela, cela promet beaucoup. Vous voyez, quand plusieurs expertises euh, se rassemblent, eh bien, ces expertises produisent de grandes choses. Comme on le dit dans nos proverbes euh, africains, eh bien, on ne se rassemble pas pour être bête, on se rassemble pour être plus intelligent. Eh bien, c'est cela qui va se passer. Nous allons tout mettre en œuvre pour, par exemple, briser les barrières linguistiques. S'il y a des étudiants en Shona, par exemple, eh bien, qui ont des difficultés, il y aura une équipe spécialisée. C'est d'ailleurs, on a, on a une faculté qui s'occupe du panafricanité des langues, des langues panafricaines. Vous voyez Donc, il y aura des experts pour guider les gens euh, pas à pas pour que pas, euh, tout soit euh, bien orienté, tout soit bien compris. Et bien, comme on le dit, le cliché, Paris n'est pas fait en un seul jour, mais nous n'allons pas promettre de miracle, mais avec l'expertise que nous avons notre discipline, notre organisation et notre détermination, il n'y a pas de montagne qu'on ne puisse pas euh, grimper. Voilà. Euh, yeah. euh, uh, May I May I add two more things? On academic entities, like you know, um, writing professional research is a skill that needs to be learned. So we will have a group that is really dedicated to helping our students create the work that they need, best work. We we'll have, like, you know, we didn't say about our library. We will have our digital library where our students will get the best of the best books that they need to, to be able to do their research and do present good work. So it's all in planning now that, you know, we are working towards um, having the student the authors writing their books, publishing them, be given to our university, Pan-African uh, li Digital Library of so what? So we will have all these books that our students need. And not only our students, but also the students in the cooperative, in the network that we are working with, they will have access to that. So we are hoping in the coming year that the African Union will be able to give um, uh, pro, pro, Prime Minister, what's that word? What's that word? Which word? When, when, the, when uh, a resolution. Yeah, I remember. It's called oh. a resolution. We are hoping that we make an application that the you, 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 the African Union will be able to support to support our 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 request so that we get all the books that are written in Africa by Africans into our library and make it accessible to our students. You know, books are the most difficult things for most of our, our students. They end up writing work that is not like up to the standard, not because they are not clever, but because they have got no resources. So we need to get, put a gap to that, close that gap. So that's what I wanted to add. And then uh, one last thing to say, you know, as you might know already with the use of, with SOWAD, we have a digital currency called the Lumi. So all our students will be encouraged to, uh, to register on the Swiffing platform so that they can, they can gain their Lumi stimulus, which is 6.26 uh, 6, 6 Lumis a month. Yeah, of course now people say like, oh, the Lumi is not working. It's still money, right? And we are building also those, those, those ecosystems so that in our day-to-day -day life, we can get to feel what the Lumi can do. Then that way, we have the money that is coming in. So until the stimulus is coming until 2023, until then, those who start now will have raised a bit of money to be able to manage. Like Prime Minister said that we hope most of our courses, if not all of them, will be free. But we are still working on the whole process to make sure that, you know, we go smoothly and no one remains behind. As you know, education is the key. And we are correcting that. De l'optimisme, mais pas un optimisme. BA, dit-elle, c'est basé sur ce qui est possible, ce qui est faisable. Nous sommes en train de mettre en place un écosystème, un écosystème qui va favoriser, n'est-ce pas, euh, euh, la mise sur pied, la constitution d'une bibliothèque, une bibliothèque numérique. 
et comment est-ce que nous allons le faire Eh bien, avec toutes ces expertises mises en commun que nous avons rassemblées, nous encourageons les gens pour qu'ils commencent à écrire, que les, écrire, les, les Africains écrivent pour la consommation africaine. Donc, nous allons apprendre à nous redécouvrir à travers ce que nous disons, que nous écrivons et que nous publions. Et ces publications seront en ligne et sera, ce sera, n'est-ce pas, dans la bibliothèque de l'Université de l'État de la Diaspora et les autres entités aussi avec lesquelles nous avons établi de partenariats pourront en bénéficier. Et du côté de finances, nous avons euh, le LUMI et nous encourageons nos étudiants et, et il y aura des sessions certainement au niveau de chaque euh, faculté pour expliquer cet aspect aux étudiants qui comprennent et qui commencent déjà à investir dans ce sens. Avant donc qu'ils ne finissent, ils auraient déjà acquis euh, une capacité donc monétaire ou financière euh, acceptable. Nous allons faire en sorte qu'une résolution soit passée au niveau de l'Union africaine pour que nous soyons soutenus euh, du, donc, de, à, tout, à tous les points, euh, tout, à tout point de vue possible. Pas? Donc cette résolution, euh, je, ce, sera, euh, ce sera chose faite. Nous allons faire tout mettre en œuvre pour que l'Union africaine euh, non seulement l'entende, mais touche de, de, du droit et voit concrètement ce que nous faisons et que cette Union nous supporte. Alors, uh, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Or just have a couple of minutes left. A couple of minutes left. Okay, sir. As we are talking about the Swifting, I mentioned the Swifting platform. Yes, it's a new concept, right? That the, our students will have to register on the Swifting platform to be able to receive their Lumi stimulus. It's a digital, digital money coming on a digital platform. It's not easy for F, for somebody who, who is starting, but we have also a dedicated team that is there to help our students understand what this system is all about. And in terms also of how it works and how they can be able to start using the LUMI to generate wealth for themselves. Remember, the LUMI is a seed to assist the child of Africa get out of poverty on their own. Not that you get the loom and you go and buy bread. When the stimulus period ends, you'll be broke again and you'll be looking for a way to buy bread. But if you take the loom stimulus, even as a student, you'll be able to start buying the bread and then eating the profit, right? So that way you are creating an ecosystem that will help you if you are learning and working and, you know, that way we manage. So, so we have a dedicated team on the, on the different platforms that will be able to support our students. And yes, we are recruiting more able people, passionate people who are there to come to work with us together so that we change this narrative that was omitted. But it's ours, us Africans changing this and leading the change. Il s'agit donc de renverser les vapeurs et changer radicalement et de façon positive. Cette question donc de l'UMI, il y aura, il y a déjà sur place une équipe bien commise à la tâche et qui pourra aider les étudiants à mieux comprendre. Il y aura une assistance sur la base donc de l'UMI, mais c'est pas de l'assistance qu'on leur donne pour qu'ils aillent acheter de bicyclettes, qu'ils aillent acheter de motos, bien de belles robes ou bien de belles montres. Non, ça ce sera une éducation donc financière. Et lorsqu'ils vont apprendre à le faire ici dans l'université, eh bien, euh, à, à la longue, ce sera toute une richesse incommensurable pour chacun et pour tous. Uh, we're running out of time, unfortunately. You know, it goes by so quickly. And I will give the floor to uh, the Prime Minister for his concluding statement. Well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Balubi. Indeed, our faculty is very, very special. What you will learn in that faculty, you will not find it anywhere. For example, our Minister Chiwuswa told you about the Faculty of um, Space, Sciences and Technology. This is where we will build our rocket by the end of this decade. I don't think there is anywhere else you might be able to participate to this great initiative. To go into another direction, we have a Royal Faculty of Historical Legacy. So if you want to know about African traditions, kingdoms, you will have the opportunity 
to receive this knowledge from our kings themselves. So we've got many great kings from Africa who have accepted to teach the young generation. So I don't think you would get any of this if you were in Europe. You will not see the Queen of the UK or the King of Belgium coming to a university to speak to their people. But you will see that in our university. So tradition and modernity are here very well served and represented. And this is exactly what Africa needs. We need to be the first when it comes to innovation, but we need to stand strongly also in our traditions. That's what the state of the African diaspora is about. Et donc je voulais, pour finir, donner deux exemples concrets de ce que nous faisons. En matière d'innovation, je l'ai dit, c'est dans cette université que nous allons construire les cerveaux qui feront la fusée panafricaine d'ici la fin de la décennie. C'est une chose unique. Je ne vois pas beaucoup d'autres universités où vous auriez l'opportunité de participer à une aventure semblable. Mais en même temps, nous avons par exemple la faculté du patrimoine royal, une faculté dans, dans laquelle les traditions royales d'Afrique seront enseignées par les rois eux-mêmes. Ce sont les rois et les leaders traditionnels qui viendront expliquer à nos jeunes comment fonctionnaient les royaumes, comment ils fonctionnent encore, comment ils se sont développés, comment ils ont été colonisés, comment ils ont malgré tout survécu et même prospéré. Et c'est quelque chose d'assez unique. Je n'ai pas connaissance que la reine d'Angleterre vienne à Cambridge enseigner à la jeunesse. Je ne crois pas que le roi d'Espagne ou le roi des Belges viennent dans les universités espagnoles ou de Belgique enseigner à leur jeunesse. Donc c'est un privilège dont nous sommes très heureux. Et donc vous voyez qu'il s'agisse de l'enseignement des traditions ou de l'enseignement de la modernité, nous devons être les meilleurs. Voilà l'objectif. Thank you, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, merci infiniment. Nous sommes à la fin de cette émission et il me revient la tâche donc de conclure et de vous dire merci d'être là, merci d'avoir était là, de nous avoir écouté. J'espère que vous avez compris ce que la nouvelle ministre de l'Éducation a dit. C'est vraiment pour moi, non seulement c'est attrayant, mais c'est une révolution. Vous avez entendu, ce n'est pas simplement des mots de soutien, ce n'est pas simplement des mots d'encouragement, mais des faits concrets et des expertises qu'on ne trouve pas ailleurs. On ne trouve cela, on ne trouvera cela que dans l'université de l'État de la diaspora, des gens qui sont en Allemagne des gens qui sont en Angleterre, des gens qui sont un peu partout, qui ont mis la main à la pâte. Et ce n'est pas simplement la théorie, mais c'est aussi la pratique. Des gens qui ont participé à la construction des fusées, des gens qui ont participé à la construction des drones, des gens qui ont été des acteurs, n'est-ce pas, des interprètes, des gens qui sont des linguistes, des gens qui sont des mécaniciens. Eh bien, c'est le savoir-faire pour le savoir-vivre et le savoir-être des Africains que nous sommes. Dear friends and viewers, thank you for being a part of this 60 minute, barely 60 minute discussion with Dr. Louis George Ten and Ms. Wimbai Chiswuta, uh, the newly uh, uh, appointed Minister of Education of SOAD. And uh, uh, before we close this here, here is something equally important, less important, but uh, I, I should say it's important as well. And I wish you would remember this, that Tempo Africa TV will soon be on satellite. But we can't do it alone. We can't do it without you, my friends. So please don't put off supporting us financially through GoFundMe.com. And the information is right there uh, on the screen right now. It's also on our website, okay, www.tempoafrictv.com. Um, it's right there on our website. What's up, Africa? This show is also accepting donations so that every year we may reward and stimulate excellence, exemplary initiatives like you saw, and relevant invention for growth and prosperity in Africa, the African diaspora across the globe. We strongly believe in you. We strongly believe that our students can achieve a lot. They can achieve more than we can expect if we teach them right. We strongly believe uh, in Africa's new hope through the youth, 
and younger generation. We know the best is still ahead. We know that. And we know that the sun will rise again. Prime Minister Tina, Minister of Education, uh, she was, well, my heartfelt appreciation goes to both of you for coming to this show today. But let's also give a big shout out to our producer who is out there behind the screen. You can see him. His name is Malik Sa. It's always working incredibly hard and as you've experienced to make sure we do everything right. We don't start until we get it right. Thank you, Mali. Thank you, Mali. And finally, to our esteemed viewers, wherever you may be, all over the world, I shall say, I say, merci beaucoup. Thank you so much for watching, and may God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you again for your invitation, thank Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is Sam Daly of Cultural Group Benefit Company, a group life insurance designed for cultural association. We've done this program now for 21 years. The program is approved in 46 states. It's a life, group life insurance program. I want to emphasize it's a group life insurance program for cultural association, guaranteed without any pre-existing medical condition. Please, cultural community, there's no need for GoFundMe. We have a program designed for cultural association. Please, if you want to know more about this program, visit our website, www.culturalgroupbenefits.com or call me directly, 763-593-5107. Thank you.